Hello, everyone. My name is Megan. I work at Craftsmith uh, on part of the art team. I help make all of the samples. Um, so today, uh, like Nate mentioned, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and drop them in the chat. Uh, Emily, one of my coworkers, is there and she can help answer that for you or if I see it pop on screen, if it's about something I'm doing, I'm going to try to answer it as well. Um, but like we mentioned, the class will be available on YouTube as well. So if you don't want to craft along with me, if you want to, you know, watch today and then do it later so you can make your own customizations, that is totally a thing you can do. Um, and it'll be on YouTube for that. Uh, for today's class, by the way, if you want to uh, tag us at, we're on Instagram at Craftsmith Co. We'd love to see what you make. So if you do make this today or if you make it in a few days, please tag us. We want to see it. Um, and also uh, tag Michaels with uh, their hashtag Michaels Classes and make it with Michaels. Um, we just love to see what everyone makes. Uh, so what we are doing today, I've got to duck a little is this pink hey boo banner behind me. Uh, pink is a really on trend color for Halloween right now. People are doing a pink Halloween, a pastel Halloween. They're really breaking Halloween out of a, a traditional orange and black space and kind of customizing it. And of course, we're crafters, we're making it our own. Uh, so that's why I chose pink today. Um, if you don't want to do pink, you can totally do this in a color scheme of your choice. Um, there's tons of paper pads available at Michael's, both in store and online. Uh, you could do it. I'm using two pads today, but you could, you know, use anything you have on hand or want to go to Michael's and find. So if we go ahead and switch to the uh, overhead. So you can see the two pads I'm using today. Um, we've got our Halloween Happy Haunting pad and we've got our specialty pinks pad. This is just really cool if you're a pink fan. It's got all kinds of colors and textures inside it. Um, and it's just so much fun to work with. So for today, these sheets that you're gonna need out of here, you're going to need this kind of like, it's not quite marbleized, it's more like a watercolor sheet. You're gonna use one of those. And you're going to use the polka dot sheet if you want to make it look exactly like mine. If you want to use other patterns, there are all kinds of patterns in here that you can use. But uh, for the pink patterns, the polka dot and the watercolor sheet. And then for this guy, we're going to be using the marble, the black glitter. And this is a great glitter, all of our glitter pads that we make, because that glitter is just stuck so well. You see nothing is on my hands. It is an amazing glitter. We're also gonna be using, this one's a little hard to show on camera, but we're gonna be using this uh, acetate sheet with the bats on it. You're gonna be using two of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out because I pre-pulled one already. I'm just kind of gonna show off the rest of this. I love this sheet. I haven't figured out a project to use this sheet in yet, but it's going to happen. I love that sheet. And spider webs are always cool. So that's that pad. But like I said, the main two pages you're going to use out of this pad are that marble, the bats, and then the black glitter. So I guess that's three, not two. Okay. So we're going to start off easy. If you did the downloads for the class, you have these sheets. I like to make my own stencils so I can kind of customize everything and I always do it just out of cardstock. So if you can go ahead and print these out of cardstock and cut them out. I went ahead and cut mine out already. Obviously, these are what's going to spell our words. And we've got our ghost and we've got the actual pennant ourselves. This is the stencil we'll be using the most. And like I said, I cut mine out already just because, you know, magic of TV. So for everything we're doing today, you want to use the back of your sheet uh, when we first are sketching things. This one will be the hardest to figure out the back of the sheet because obviously most of the papers, you flip them over and they're white. This one's clearly 
no, it's not white. But if you flip it to the back, you can see the backs are kind of this muted gray color. That's the back of the sheet. So we're going to take our cardboard or our uh, cardstock stencil. Since this is an acetate sheet, I have not successfully been able to get any kind of pen to work on this um, to actually show up. Plus, if you don't actually, since it's clear, if you don't actually cut your line off and uh, you leave marks, you're going to see it. So what I've had the most success with so far is using a scoring tool, which I just have this simple little scoring tool here, um, and my stencil. The nice thing about these bats is there's really not a right side up. They're kind of all directions, so you're not going to notice if you, you know, bats fly, you're not going to notice if it's not a direction you think it should be. So take your pennant and I'm going to line it up as perfectly as I can with this corner because that will give me less lines to cut later. So I've got it lined up here with the edge of my paper and I've got it lined up here with the edge of my paper. If you don't have a scoring tool for this, you can use a pen. You just want to be able to use something you can put a lot of pressure into so that you can uh, kind of push a line into the paper versus, uh, versus drawing. So I'm using, there's two ends to this. This is like the thicker ball end. Hopefully you can see that a little bit. And I'm just going to trace right along. This project is fairly easy. This and then one step later are the hardest parts, but even then it's not that hard. So pretty much crafters of any skill level, you should be able to do this. Um, you can do this, you can do this, I know you can. Uh, if you're trying to help little ones do this, they just may need some help with a little bit of coordination, lining things up and probably with this step. Um, just because this is the least visible of everything we're doing. And you see I'm kind of going over my lines more than once because I really want to leave that indentation in there so it's easy for me, for easier for me to see. If you are someone that is really skillful with a razor blade, you could do that instead of using this and just cut it right out. The reason I did not do that is we are going to use both sheets of the bat that come in the pad because we need to make six bat pennants because there are six letters in Hey Boo. Um, and there's only two sheets of this bat material in the Happy Haunting pad. So I wanted to make sure that if I make a mistake, it's not, I have a little bit of ability to fix it. Whereas if I had cut it at the same time, you know, that whole adage, measure, measure twice, cut once, uh, very much comes into play. Um, if I cut it the first time and realize I made a mistake, um, then I'm in a little bit of trouble. And I mean, like I said, the nice part here is there's no front or back to this stencil. It is just symmetrical, no matter what I do. So I can't mess that up. But we're going to need six of the bat pennants to use both of your sheets. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. You can kind of, I don't know if it will show up on camera because it is so slight, but there is like a score line. I'm trying to get the light to catch it and it doesn't want to catch it. There is a score line that was created with that. You can kind of see it in the top over here, but there's a score line right there. So that's what you're going to cut along to cut your pennant out. And this is probably the most careful cutting I will do in the project. Because again, I don't have an abundance of options and extra paper for this particular part. What we are going to do today to make, because our pink pad, as much as I love it, is not particularly Halloween. -y. So in order to make it more Halloween-like, a little bit more spooky season, we are layering these bats over top. See, I've got one pennant right there. 
we're gonna layer these bats over top of the pink paper. And that'll give it a bit more of a Halloween vibe. And that is also why I think you could do this in any color because our bats are really doing a lot of the spooky work for us. Our bats and our ghosts, which we're gonna make out of the marble paper. I'm trying to see if you can see the score line a little better with the smaller sheet, kind of right there. You see I've got my pennant scored in. I always have the best luck using scissors with this. I haven't tried. If you own a Cricut, you might be able to try to make some a shape similar on a Cricut and cut this out. I haven't tried it with this particular paper or acetate, but I assume it would work on a Cricut. It seems thin enough. There are some plastic sheets. I've had issues cutting out on my Cricut. Where is my line? Okay. So you can see I did it and even then I'm having a little moment where I'm wondering where I'm supposed to cut. If you're not perfect, that's okay. You don't have to be perfect. We can, if we make this a little bit wide, we can trim it down later when we layer it over top of our pink pieces. I need to cut this side down just a little. And if you're not sure if you should cut something down for this sheet, I say leave it until you get to the pink piece because that will, you know, that will show you. All right, so you can see I have, because I went ahead and cut some ahead of time, I have six bat pennants. And do you see what I mean about there's not, it's not super directional, this bat pattern. So you can't super tell if maybe one came out of the page like this and one came out of the page like that, which is a nice thing about this pattern by not being directional is you can get away with a lot more. You know, if it was something like a stripe, like a vertical or a horizontal stripe, you'd have to be a lot more careful with how you cut that out. Otherwise you might have some stripes going this way and some stripes going this way and it'd be a whole thing. All right, so since we're already cutting our pennants, I'm gonna go ahead and keep cutting our pennants. So, like I said, we are gonna need a couple more sheets from our pink pad. So go ahead and find this sheet if you like it. It's just the nice subtle kind of watercolor pink sheet. Looks like it has brush strokes all over it. And you can see I traced mine on here already because I know you couldn't super see how I put them on the bat pad. You can see here really clearly that I am, I used my stencil to line it up with the corners perfectly so that I didn't have to worry about cutting an extra line. It just, you know, these pads are cut perfectly square. So it is really nice to be able to let that do some of the work. So then I only have to cut this part or like up here, I did it along the top edge so that I could make it fit. The one thing to be cautioned of on, cautioned of on your colored sheets is the hole that's punched right there and that white line. So just make sure you, uh, when you trace yours on, this is down far enough that you avoid the hole. And if you avoid the hole, you will avoid this white part of the front sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. And since I can see these a little better, I'm, you know, this is probably gonna go way easier for me. I really hope some of you make this in a few different colors or a few different patterns just so I can see what you guys would do because I love seeing the different, different ways the same project can turn out. I just like seeing people be creative. So I encourage you to take this project and kind of make it your own. Maybe you can up the sparkle quotient more than I am or up the spooky quotient. Part won't come out. There we go. 
two. Like I said, we're going to need six pennants total. And I used two different patterns of pink. If you don't want to alternate patterns for your pink, you don't have to. Or your background pennant. I guess it doesn't have to be pink, but for today's class, it's pink. But I thought it gave it something to kind of do two different patterns. So there's my first pattern. And then because of the magic of TV, I already cut out my second pattern. And my second pattern, as you can see, is that uh, polka dot. So we can see together, I've got three pennants of this pattern, three pennants of this pattern, and six of the bats. Because our bat is going to go over top each and every one of those. And just kind of give it a Halloween kick, see? It like goes from being just a cute little like, you know, maybe birthday party to a Halloween party. All right. And yes, whoever liked the scissors, I love these scissors too. Not sure where they're from, but they're great. And they're super sharp, which is really nice. All right, so we are done with this stencil, so set it aside. The next stencil we're gonna use is our ghosts. If you want to freehand your ghosts a little bit, please feel free. Um, if you don't like, you know, kind of my severe edges down there on the bottom, um, you can be a little bit more loose with him if you want to. Uh, I just wanted to give you guys a stencil. And this is this sheet we're going to use for our ghost is from the Halloween Happy Haunting paper pad. It's just kind of a nice gray and black marble. And the same thing again, we have to be cautious of this white strip on top. So just make sure everything you do, you're going to trace it on below the hole. And I'm going to go ahead and do this one live for you. And again, the nice thing about this pattern of this sheet of paper is that it is not directional. So it does not matter where I put these ghosts on here, as long as I leave myself room for three ghosts. That is the biggest thing. I mean, if you somehow traced this in a way that you couldn't get three ghosts out of it, there is, I believe, a second sheet of every pattern in the Halloween pad. But you know, you wanna be wise with your supplies so that you can uh, use them in multiple projects. So you're just gonna, and again, the nice thing also about the ghosts, like the pennant, is there is no front and back. So it does not matter how you lay him on the paper here. My ghost, although he reminds me, he looks like a ghost once you get him all done. But like when I'm just tracing him like this each time, I think he looks like a webbed duck foot. All right, so I've got my three ghosts on the paper there. You kind of see it, it's washing out a little bit in the light. But hopefully you can see that enough. This project is really just a lot of cutting and then attaching things together. So that's when like anyone, any level can do this as long as, even kids, as long as someone can supervise them working with sharp things. But yeah, if you wanted to make a little bit more of the traditional like um, wavy bottom to a ghost, you could totally freehand that. Um, or if you wanted to make it look like the Pac-Man ghost, you could totally do that too. And you'll notice we haven't punched holes in anything yet. So you might have noticed my uh, stencils have holes pre-punched in them, but we will be doing that after we get a few more steps done. We have some things to assemble. You see, I'm not perfectly cutting along my lines for my ghost because I am comfortable if each ghost is just slightly different or if I don't think he's cut out perfectly. You know what, he's a ghost. He's a, you know, he doesn't have a cohesive physical form. Because you can see it, I didn't cut out my outlines perfectly. I'm cool with that. 
There's number two. I could have probably been more economical with how I used this sheet of paper if I wanted to like, you know, save it, save my scraps craft for later, but not overly concerned with that today. But it is something I usually take into account. As you saw with the pennants, I want to get every square inch of that paper used possible. All right. All right, so you should have, at this point, we've got three ghosts. And three of these, three of these, six of these. Okay. Now, the part, at least for me personally, that takes the longest with this project is cutting out the letters. Um, so you have your letter stencils. Clearly, I can't spell today. They're gonna make out hey boo. We need one each of these letters. This, you're gonna to have to cut two O's because there's two O's in boo. Um, now, if you liked the example that was in the photo for this class, the example that was behind me, you're gonna use this pink glitter from the pink pad. So it's this nice, just kind of almost pastel pink. You could use, there's a second glitter, you could use this darker pink. I just liked how the uh, brighter pink popped a little more. But just for fun, I decided to see what it would look like if I used the black glitter that was in the Halloween pad, the Happy Haunting pad. So that's what we're gonna make with today's, today's or what I'm gonna make. But if you want to make mine, like I said, use the pink. And the big thing to know, I'm not gonna cut out the letters live. You can get all six letters. I'm using a scrap, I'm sorry. You can get all six letters on the back of one of the 12 by 12 sheets. Um, I've done it a few times now. So you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna take your stencil and you're gonna trace it onto the back. The biggest thing is these three letters, are symmetrical. It doesn't matter if I put them down and trace them this way, or if I flip them over and trace them this way, they're gonna come out the same no matter what. These letters are obviously directional. If you get a B out of your patterned paper and it looks like this or this, that's wrong. So we need to be conscious of how we're putting these two letters onto the back side of our paper so that we cut it out in the proper direction when this is flipped over. So if you used my patterns, this will be somewhat easy because our correct side of our letters is black and our wrong side is white. So you wanna put these on the paper so that the black side is down so that we have our white side facing up and trace them onto the paper. I'm not going to cut them out. This is just an example. So your B, for example, will look backwards today. But then when you actually cut it out, your glitter will be on the right side and your B will be going the correct direction. Okay. But again, trace on the back of the paper, A, because I don't know how well you can actually mark up the glitter, but also if you're using a colored glitter, you don't want to, you know, leave a pencil line or a pen line that's going to show up in your final project. So I always work on the back where if some of my lines don't, like I don't cut them out perfectly, it won't show. Um, the most difficult cutting in this project is the letters, which is why I prepped them ahead of time. Uh, because that would take a very long portion of our class. Um, and mainly the hard part is getting into the center of these. Um, 
I think optional on the supply list might have been a razor blade. Um, and that was because I used a blade to open up the middle of these because um, that was just way easier for me, especially on the B. But you can use scissors. Just be very careful and you should have enough left over of any glitter pad or page that you use, whatever color, that you can uh, cut a letter again if you make a mistake. Um, but like I said, I love the glitters in our glitter pad because not only are they just super blingy, I mean, look at that black right there. It's catching so much light. But this glitter, if it's one of our glitter pads, super stays on. Like I have no glitter on my hand right now. I just keep bringing that up because I was using another random glitter at home and it got everywhere. This glitter gets nowhere. All right, so that is what you use those for. All right, so we have most of our pieces once you cut your letters out, except our ghosts don't look like ghosts yet. We need to make them faces. So that's where these guys come in. If you don't have hole punches, uh, which I usually don't at home, I only have them at work, um, you can 100% find household items that will double for circles about this size. The one inch punch is about the size of a quarter. The five eighths inch is about the size of a penny or a dime. So uh, I'm sure if you don't have hole punches, you can find some change to use as stencils. And to use our stencils themselves, you will need the black glitter. As you can see, I've done this before because I already cut things out of it. And you will need some white cardstock, which I would, I've just used the scraps from my stencils before. Okay, so for the mouths on our ghosts, we're gonna use three punches or three circles of the small size. And it doesn't matter if you do this right side or wrong side, I just tend to always do it on the wrong side. So I'm gonna punch one, punch two, punch three. So I've got three little mouths now for my ghosts. And for the eyeballs, since this is super white in comparison, I am going to make the background of their eyeballs black. So we're gonna use the big punch and we need six of these. I don't know why that math is hard. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, so that's what you're cutting out of the black. We have just arranging them in sets so you can see. So we have, for each ghost, we have eyes and a mouth but it would look weird if we just left the eyes black. So we're gonna go back to our smaller punch again, our 5 eighths inch punch, and we need six. Why is this blocking me? There's some tape in here, somehow. There we go. We need six white pupils, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So you can see they're starting to look like eyes. If you happen to have like big googly eyes in your craft kit, you could totally do that too. All right, so we have eyes and a mouth. And we're gonna arrange our six ghosts. I wanna encourage you to have some fun with their facial expressions as much as you can. I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So you're just gonna take your trusty little glue stick. I usually just put my dot right on top of it, move it around with my finger as so. And then just start popping mouths on. I always like to pop the mouths on first. I don't know why. You can see again, I'm just kind of swiggling around my glue stick. If you don't have a glue stick, something like double-sided tape will do. Um, hot glue might be a little, little much for this project, but you're welcome to use that too. Whatever adhesive you have on hand. Tacky glue would be great. All right, so we've got three mouths on. So now they just look like they have a belly button because they don't have eyes yet. All right, and we're gonna start putting eyes on. Whoops. 
You'll see what I mean in a second when I say I have fun with my ghost facial expressions. So I'm gonna start by just putting the black parts of the eyes on each and every ghost. I don't know why I apply the glue to these this way. It just feels easier rather than flipping it over and doing that. And I don't get my desk all gross with glue stick, which actually might be the main reason I hate that like glue stick, sticky stuff that gets left behind if you accidentally get your uh, surface. Oops, I skipped a ghost. All right, so like I said, it, technically, we could pretty much leave the ghosts at this stage if we wanted to. It might be a little bit spookier too, but I like giving them facial expressions. And where you give, really kind of get into the facial expressions is with the pupils. So I'm gonna make it so they're looking certain directions. So I'm gonna put this guy so that he is looking to my right. He's sliding his eyes over there. <laughs> Thank you, I love the ghosts. And then these guys, this middle guy is gonna be looking up. And then this guy is going to be looking to my left. There we go. So we've got three ghosts, each one with a different facial expression. Okay. Debating what my next step is going to be. I think what we're going to do, just take your little ghosts and set them off to the side. And let's grab our baths and our letters. I just really wanted to see what it would look like this time with black letters. We need to spell. Well, we technically don't have to spell yet. We're just attaching. We can spell when we put them on here. I'm using double stick tape. Again, you can use whatever adhesive you want. I would hesitate using hot glue on this just because it's acetate and I don't know at what temperature it might start to warp or melt. So I would really stick with some kind of either double stick tape or glue if you can. Yeah. Sometimes having this like double tape thing is awesome and other times they get stuck together. And again, make sure you've got the right side of your pennant, which is the side where the black bats are black, not where the black ah, bats are gray. That's really, bats are black is a hard sentence to say. Okay, we've got our B. I'm gonna put one of these under here just so you can see. Okay, so you can see how I'm lining this up. You've got our little point here. We're just gonna go a little hair right above that point and try to center the letter in the pennant as much as you can and smooth it down. So again, I'm just keeping this here right now so you can see it, but you can see I barely, just like a fraction, like a pencil tip above that point is where I put the bottom of B and then we've got that centered and how it should look without it. Okay. And like I said, right now we're not spelling, we're just attaching. So I'm just grabbing the letters as I have them. Okay, I'm lining him up again. He's fairly centered. 
depending what adhesive you use, if you put it down and realize it's just totally off center, you might be able to fix it if you get it to it quickly. Just be careful because if it is a liquid adhesive, you might leave a residue on here. Since this is a clear uh, page, it is a little bit less forgiving in some ways uh, because you're gonna be able to see what's going wrong. I have very thick tape, so I have to kind of fold it to the ends here because I don't want any tape showing if I can help it. Yeah, I did not do a great job of hiding my tape, maybe, but it's hidden. Put something on my glitter. All right. Lining that up again. Sometimes I'll use my fingers as guides, like that's a finger away from the edge, and that's about a finger away from the edge, so therefore it must be centered. I know I have friends who like pull out a ruler for everything and that's awesome um, like that they're able to be that exact I just don't think that way like I want it to look exact but I'm not going to do the math to be like this is this many fractions of an inch and this is this wide and the exact center would be here I tend to be pretty good at eyeballing things um, and I find little tricks to help me with it all right, so I'm finding the center of my Y and measure, bottom of my Y and measuring it up with the center there. This one looks too wide, but I'll figure it out. Might be cutting that down. All right, my O's. Okay. I hope everyone has some fun plans for Halloween this year. As long as we can all stay safe and healthy. I haven't figured out my Halloween plans yet, but I want to have them this year. We're out in California, so we keep having, or I keep having a bunch of friends that are going to uh, Universal Studios because they, this year, are doing the Halloween Horror Nights again. And uh, it's been weird and good to see people doing that in like droves again after not being able to do anything last year. All right. Okay, we've got those lined up. Now, the next step we're gonna do is for every single piece. And it doesn't take long, but it is for every single piece. Okay. And this is actually where I'm gonna suggest First, let's go ahead and line up our bat letters with our pink pattern. So you see I'm laying this out, a little bit of it's off camera, forgive me. It's a big word or a big, somewhat big project. We're gonna start lining this up and this is where we're gonna spell is we wanna make sure we get every other pattern. All right, so I've got my hey boo. I'll put it vertical so you can hopefully see it on camera. So you see I've matched up every other thing with the bat with the letter and it spells. So when it goes on the, uh, on the actual banner, we're gonna have our patterns interchanging. Um, okay, so the reason I did this is because we need to, oh, I don't know if you can see, but look, my bat is bigger than my pink there. So I'm actually going to go ahead and fix that a little bit. Not going to take too much of it off because I don't think it's severely noticeable, but it was kind of doing that. So we're going to take line these up because I want them to line these up perfectly when they hang. We are gonna take a hole punch 
and we're going to try to punch these together at the same time. So we need two holes, one in each corner. So I'm going to go here. Oh, it's not easy. And we're going to try a trick. Okay. I'm going to try punching through this first and then we'll punch through the ST. Why is my hole punch defective? Let's try it this way. That one worked, kind of. I do not have the best hole punch, you guys. Please forgive me. Apparently, it just doesn't want to punch through things. Hey, Emily, would you be able to go downstairs and get me one of the big green handled hole punches? Yeah, I'll get you one. Thank you. I didn't realize this one was going to be so difficult. Ah. Okay, so see my, my hole punch, this is not great. My current hole punch is leaving these like, if you voted in the 2020 election, it's leaving a hanging jet. If you don't know that joke, I must be getting old. So we're gonna hang on just a second while Emily grabs that for me. Cause this just doesn't wanna punch through. But basically we are gonna be punching holes in our banner, uh, each corner of everything so that we can string it. Thank you for someone laughing at my joke. <laughs> ah, that's what I think of every time. And then I'm like, oh, might've been my first presidential election, but I voted in that election. So I'm gonna check these and see if they lined up. They did actually pretty well. At least looks like so far, I just have that one. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so this is a better hole punch. I thought I could get away with the dainty cute one. Wow, this, this edge, I cut too big too. I thought I did it okay. I did not. Oh, I can see my line now. The light shifted in here just a little bit so it's not as crazy bright as it was at the start of the class. And that means I can see a little more. Okay, so this will work better. Line them up. Punch in the corner there. in the corner there. If you've got a weaker hole punch, what I suggest is what I tried to do last time, punch this, then line this on top of it and punch through your existing hole. I'm gonna go back and try to fix this because it didn't fully punch. But this is a great hole punch. I don't know what brand it is. Like This must be the brand. It says we are memory keepers. So I'm guessing it's a scrapbooking tool of some kind. It's a great hole punch. I'm just gonna turn these over as I do them and keep them in letter order. Okay, this one I cut pretty good. See, so we're just gonna go here in this corner and here in this corner. And because mine is missing the little cover here, which we did. So I like being able to see where my hole punch is going, where the hole is actually gonna be. So we removed the little cover up here, but because of that, I keep getting shot in the face with the little paper parts. So just be warned if you do that, it's really nice to be able to like, see, I can see exactly where that hole is gonna go. But that does mean your little hole punch flies at you. So that is done for that. Our ghosts, we wanna be a little bit conscious of you know, their heads. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put something right about there. And then try as evenly across the way as I can. And do that for each ghost. Not absolutely uh, adamant that your ghosts hang perfectly straight, just because, you know, ghosts can fly in any direction they like. All right, we are like 90% done, uh, but I'm going to line some things up and I'm gonna do it vertically because if I do it horizontally, it goes off camera. So I just wanna lay this out again. 
So you can see we're basically at the point where we're going to string our banner. And our ghosts are going to go between things. So you remember how I made my ghosts look directionally? One of the reasons I did that is we're going to have him looking towards hay. He's my one looking right. My one looking up is going to go in the middle. And then my one looking left is going to go at the end. So he's watching the other ghosts. Okay. Now, in my example for the class, this is the ribbon I used. It's just a cool, like, kind of orange ribbon with a little black accent. It's, you know, nice and Halloween-y. I measured. I don't have enough left of this because you need between about five and six feet of ribbon um, to string this, especially if you don't want it to be really uh, stuck together, um, if you don't want it sitting on top of each other. Um, so I'm going to try something a little bit different. I've got two orange ribbons. I have just this plain kind of satin ribbon. And then I found this in our stash. It's just this like cool sequiny thing. And we're going to try to string both of these through our banner. It may not work. You may watch me epic fail live, but we're going to try. So the first thing you're going to do, and even if you're just doing one strand of ribbon, you're going to do this anyway because we don't want our ends to fray. Um, we're just going to take our ribbon and make a knot at the end. So at least if things start to fray, they won't go further than the knot. So it's just a simple little knot in my ribbon. And I have no idea if this is going to work, genuinely. All right, I need to move. I'm going to step, what I'm going to do, this is my general method for things, is I'm going to stack these in the order I need to take them. So my ghost first, my O's, my B, another ghost. Y, E, H, can't pick them up. And my ghost is the first guy I'm gonna need. Okay. Making myself some room. Okay. All right. Well, those do look cool together, so I hope this works. Stringing it is not super hard. I may have increased the difficulty level since I'm using two, uh, two ribbons here. Um, it's just annoying. I'm gonna warn you that it's just annoying because it's a little bit tedious. So we've got our holes and we don't want our ribbon to go here and create like a headband on our ghost. We want it to go behind our ghost so that it's only showing between our letters. So, I've got like six feet of ribbon here, so that's why it's like a little bit tedious. On the left side hole on each and every piece, you are going to take your ribbons, your ribbon, and go in Pull it to the end. This will get a little bit easier with each one you go. And I'm going to leave, looking at my other one, I want to try to leave probably between like six and eight inches on this end so that you can hang it. I don't know if this is going to work. Eh, it looks cute so far. We'll try it. All right. So if we went down there, we're going to come through this end. If you do end up doing something like me and you use more than one type of ribbon, get creative with it. You might just have to like loop things or twist things. See how it works. If you want to stay simple, use one kind of ribbon. All right. So you see, I've got my ghost securely on there. So now we're going to move on to our first letter. This feels a little bit like embroidery. If any of you have ever done like simple embroidery, just on a really big scale because you're like going in and out and in and out. 
All right, so we're doing these at the same time. So hold them together. Get your hole. Stick it through there. You have probably figured out this sequence by now, but we gotta go all the way to the end. Okay. And I'm gonna try to put just kind of that much distance between my uh, my letters or my pieces. They're not all letters, some of them are ghosts. I just decided to, I could have done this with just the orange ribbon. That would have been the easy choice. But uh, I decided I just wanted to up the bling factor a little bit. That's why I went ahead when I saw this sequined, sequined ribbon and decided to add it in, but I wasn't sure it would work by itself to string. All right, so we've got two on here. Moving on to our third. We have nine pieces total to get on this banner. And also if there are any little ones making this project, this is a part they might need help with um, just because it's getting the ribbon through the hole. It's kind of like tying your shoes. It's not, you know, if you're not used to uh, doing a lot of really limber dexterous movements with your hands, you're still learning, uh, that's the hard part. But this is totally would be a fun craft Oh, see, even my satin ribbon is just twisting around. So do watch your ribbon. As you're stringing, you may need to untwist things. I may actually leave it because it looks kind of good to have my two ribbons twisting together. But if you're using another ribbon, you may need to be cautious of how much it is twisting. Um, I'm not sure if there's ribbons where there's a right side and a wrong side, but that feels like a thing because that's something that's with fabric. So I imagine there might be the right side and the wrong side to some ribbons. And you could, of course, use a ribbon that fits into whatever color scheme you like. I did pink for obvious reasons. Okay, and there we go, we've got these on. We are moving on to our Y. Just remember, Here's where the spelling matters. All right, this doesn't want to hold together. My uh, pink and my bats. Whoop, thought I was using my elbow to hold my banner down, so that didn't happen. No, that was not. Okay. It's interesting. I like how the sequins peek out every now and again. All right, we've, oh, nope, I didn't get the other side of my Y on. Sounds like an ex existential question every time I say it. Why? All right. We're halfway through. So we need another ghost. In my case, I need my ghost that's rolling his eyes. I almost put the ribbon in the wrong direction. We wanna go in on the left. I would say I would probably use about six feet of ribbon I feel like most banners you buy in a store are going to be about five to six feet. Um, so you need at least that much, I think, because these are, you know, we're putting nine figures or nine pieces onto losing a couple sequins at the end of this. We're putting nine pieces onto this banner. So you do need a bit of real estate to uh, let that happen. Oh, I 
picked up too many pieces. There we go. I love making banners and wall decor. I think just because it's an easy, cheap way to like switch out the art, art on your wall and make it seasonal. Come on. And I feel like a nice wall banner, especially in a good place like the kitchen or over the fireplace, just like if you have a fireplace, it's just a nice, easy way to suddenly signal the season. To be like, yes, I have my Halloween banner and you can see it the moment you enter my house. So you know we're celebrating spooky season here. <sighs> All right. My ribbon, my satin one too, is unraveling at the more I do this, which again is why we're gonna knot it at the end. But if you wanna prevent that as you're uh, doing this, you can kind of scotch tape the ends and then just remove the scotch tape later. But since I'm most of the way through, look, we're all the way to V. I'm just gonna to try to keep going. But my ribbon is definitely fraying. Oh, I keep trying to do it the wrong way. We need to go in on the left side. Oh, it's fighting me. I'm just gonna try to pinch it together. I've done cross stitch and embroidery for enough years I can make this work. There we go. Oops. All right. B. Oh, oh, wow, saying the wrong letter. Pinching that together because it's fraying. Getting it through. All right, we have two more things, an O and a ghost. We are almost done. If you do use two ribbons, you probably just want to go, go back at the end and play with the, uh, play with like twisting them or something so that they uh, show up, both show up. Although it's kind of doing this nice peekaboo thing right, right now, which I like. So I don't know if I'm gonna play with mine. All right, I've got all my letters on here. I've got a hey and a boo. So now I just need my final ghost. And like I said, it gets a little bit easier in some ways to string as you get along because I have way less of a tail now than I did at the beginning. Like that first letter, I was stringing forever. Whereas now I'm just like, done. All right, so we have got everything strung. We've got the tail. We kind of want to keep the tail because you're going to be able to move your letters further apart or closer together, or just uh, the tail allows you to hang it. So we're going to take our ends just like we did before, tie a knot. It's as simple as that. So we've got, <laughs> we've got a knot at each end. <laughs> 
And we have got, I can't get it all on screen, at least not right side up. We have got a completed Hey Boo banner. Hiding my little ghost there. So if we can go back to our front facing camera, <laughs> you will see your banner now looks like this guy. So I encourage you guys to, uh, like I said, customize this project, make it your own, change your color out. Like I, I'm kind of digging the black letters on this, um, but I also do love that pink. Uh, and yeah, totally, totally show us your, your what you make. You can tag us at Craftsmith Co. We love to see it. Um, if you have any questions for me before today's class is over, please drop them in the chat and I can answer them now. Um, otherwise, you can also contact us uh, on our Instagram or our Facebook, which again is at Craftsmith Co. Uh, usually Emily is on there and she can uh, answer questions about our products. Um, and of course, Michael's is always a resource you should use as well. This class will be up in about 24 hours on their YouTube. So you can just play me on repeat as you make this if you need that encouragement. You know, video me would love to do that for you. Um, and yeah, I hope you all had a great time today and you have an even better Halloween and uh, holiday season. We will see you guys soon. I know we have a class coming up a card making class coming up in a little while and I will be back to teach a Christmas class in December. So we'll see you guys soon.